All right. Aloha mai kako. Uh, I just want to welcome everyone to this wonderful, exciting solidarity panel between Kanaka and the Micronesian community. Uh, together we rise. I would love to thank the uh, organizers of La Ho'i Ho'i Ea for inviting us to do this panel during this significant month for Kanaka. I feel that um, uh, my name is uh, Joy Lehuanani Inamoto. I am uh, a member of Koa Futures and um, also a longtime advocate of solidarity between Pacific peoples. Um, and I feel like this is a conversation that is long overdue. Uh, it is a conversation in which I feel we are turning back toward each other and seeking those connections that we had for a very, very, very long time that somehow we, many of us uh, in the community have lost our way and we've lost our memory about our connections to folks uh, in Micronesia. For, for those, for, in the most basic way, in the most easy memory for folks to know is that for the Hokulea, the inaugural voyage of that, when we had forgotten how to voyage, we had Papa Mao uh, Piel, um, from Tatawal help us find our way back to navigation. Uh, but that's, that's just one of the many examples. When we think of our connections through the nuclear free and independent Pacific for all of the struggles that happened during the 1970s, 80s and 90s, there were Micronesians by our side. They were there in Kalama Valley. They were there at uh, Waiahole Waikane. They were making signs here for us at Stevenson Middle School. They, um, the connection, the sheer connection in terms of when we were fighting for Koholawe, when we were we, when we were standing up for demilitarization in Hawaii, they were standing right by our side, and we were standing by their side in terms of returning, in terms of their their sovereignty and their independence and be able to run their countries free and independent of US military, all the things that we fight for. And that is, that is part of the coming together, that memory of who we are together, how strong we were together. There are, there are major figures. Uh, uh, Darling Keju Johnson uh, was, a major, was a major leader in the nuclear free and independent uh, fight. Palawan uh, uh, Moses, Up, uh, I'm sorry, Upolong, was also another, another great leader in terms of these connections of Hawaiians and Micronesians coming together. And, part, and one thing that's really heavy on our minds right now in this moment, in this time, is that a young man, several young men, actually many young men who should be alive are not. And they are not alive at the hands of state violence. And there was a time when Hawaii, like, and, and still to this day, Hawaiians are number one in the prison, right? We are this target, we are together targeted by state violence. And there was a very clear time where Hawaiians and Micronesians fought together for independence, for sovereignty, and for an end to state violence and state occupation. So when we speak about what we want in the kingdom of Hawaii, these are the things that we need to think about is how do we move forward together as Pacific people? If we do not want to mimic our occupiers, how do we think about these things together? And so tonight we're gonna share a little bit um, I'm just, I'm going to be facilitating. The discussion is really going to be happening between my uh, co-panelists. Um, I'm going to just do a brief introduction and then I'm going to hand it off to my friend, Carol Ann, to do a short uh, poem and then we're going to get into the sort of thick of the discussion. So I'd like to welcome tonight, uh, Carol Ann Carl is a daughter of the beautiful island of Pompeii in the Federated States of Micronesia, having graduated with her bachelor 
of Science in Biochemistry at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. She now lives and works in the Kingdom of Hawaii. Currently, Carol Ann is a grant writer at Kokua Kalihi Valley Comprehensive Family Services. She is a Micronesian advocate and activist whose work in community revolves around Micronesian youth and women. As a storyteller, her collective work, uh, <laughs> I just said that wrong. I'm gonna have her say it correctly. I apologize. Is a collection of writing and poetry that explores the social context of her life and, um, and as a transformer of that social context. Most recently, her work has been featured in the 2021 Sundance Film Festival, Celebrate Micronesia Festival, and Why It Matters Civic Engagement docuseries from the Hawaii Humanities Council. Uh, next, we have my buddy Austin. He is the son of Micronesian immigrants and the first generation in his family to be raised, to be raised in the diaspora. Home for him is Fishaidap, Fishaidailap, um, and Lamatrek and Tatawa Atolls of the Outer Islands of Yap, as well as finishing up his ballot as, as, as the village of Pol in, help me Austin on that, uh, on that word, Ingarad. Ingarad, yeah, perfect. Ingarad, state in the Republic of Palau. Austin is finishing up his bachelor's of social work at, my, at the Myron B. Thompson School of Social Work at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. He was formerly an outreach student assistant with the Center for Pacific Island Studies at uh, the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Austin is an advocate and community youth organizer for the Micronesian community here on Oahu and is excited to currently be overseeing K-Vibe, um, which I personally have a bike from, uh, a nonprofit youth program that uses its capacity as a bike shop to mentor youth in creating space for them to grow and foster civic engagement. Lastly, but not least is Punahele, he is a ghetto country moat Hawaiian from Makaha, Hawaii, that stands against anything that is harmful to Aina. Uh, he is a hip hop practitioner that uses music to create a soundtrack to Hawaiian struggles and front, front lines. Punahele is a Nahoku Hanohano award winner and Hawaii's first ever Iron MC champion and has been teaching community songwriting and poetry workshops and incar to incarcerated and at risk youths for over 10 years. He is using this as a platform to bring Pacific communities together. So having said all that, I am going to, because uh, these guys are amazing, uh, I have very little to say after this. Uh, I'm gonna turn this over to Carol Ann and she is going to share her beautiful poetry with us. Kalang and Joy. I'm just gonna jump right into the poem. One less cockroach. Prove me wrong. Hate. So much hate. So much misinformed. Hate, so much cognitive dissonance, so much selective force-fed ignorance. Why? Why is a 16-year-old child dead? Why was he shot by a public servant sworn to protect? Because he was a criminal. Because he was a young Micronesian Chukis boy caught in the liminal, misplaced, displaced identity, never Micronesian enough, never Hawaiian enough, never American enough, never colonizer labeled enough. People shown a lens that chooses to see our kids as the problem instead of the systemic socioeconomic barriers that barred them. The same system that says stealing justifies a brown child's death is the very system that doesn't hold the colonizer accountable for land theft. The same system where we have to constantly reiterate, articulate generational trauma that's race-based is the very system stripping us of our ancestral landscape, separating us from our indigenous spaces where we can constellate, recenter this boy's diasporic identity, displace his self-hate, teach him that as the owner of a young Micronesian Chuki's identity, his existence, as the descendant of a navigating society is the extensive culmination of a legacy 
of people crossing oceans to create relationships and connections. Relationships and connections in order to be adaptable, in order to be resilient. As a young Micronesian Buen Bayan woman, I choose to have the audacity to call on those connections my ancestors crossed oceans for. I challenge the relationships that my ancestors and your ancestors abolish, dismantle, transform. Cross this ocean of liberation in solidarity and rebirth the ocean nation that our ancestors dreamed for I Remember Saikap, so that we don't have to worry about our future ancestors and the legacies that we're going to leave. For I Remember Saikap, for the young, for the misled, for I remember psych up. See, the thing that I need people to understand is we can teach the young misled, but we can't teach the young dead. We can teach the young misled, but we can't teach the young dead. Thank you, Joy. Mahalo nui loa. That was so beautiful and so powerful. And I, I just want to hold up that that last sentence. Uh, we can teach the, the misled, but we cannot teach the dead, right? We cannot teach the young dead. And I think that that is the thing that there is no situation in which stealing a car equals an execution. There's no situation in which there are so many, so many white lives that get to live <laughs> for these situations and, and, and are, and so I, I want us to think about the, all the people that do get shot and these, that, that we, that Hawaiians are, when it wasn't, when it, when it's not Hawaiians, right? Um, I, I, I want us to remember constantly that there is always going to be a replacement population for blame, right? For rather than focusing on the state, rather than focusing on who's holding the gun. Um, and on that, thinking of that, I kind of want to, I want to turn it over to, to Austin. Or Caroline, did you want to speak some more? Do you want me to come back to you? Um, Austin, I want, if you could talk a little bit about what it's like working at KVibe, being in the community, the stories, the sheer stories that you're getting um, uh, you know, daily in the, you know, working in a community and, and the kind of interactions of, of prejudice and, and issues that you're, you've been facing. Um, I work at Kiva, but I think for me as a, somebody that was born and raised, especially in the mainland away from Pacific Islanders or a lot of Pacific Islanders, I think it, it's, it's a blessing. It's the Hawaii that I expected um, when I moved here in 2013. Um, you know, coming from North Carolina, there's not a lot of Pacific Island people out there. Um, it's very few and far in between when you do meet them. But so when I, when I moved over here, I was, I was like super excited. You know, I'm going to be with like people that you want to be with my people be with other islanders nobody's gonna mistake me for hispanic talking spanish to me you know randomly randomly and so it, the first couple of years is a struggle because i didn't know exactly like the depth of the i guess you know the topic of conversation i didn't know just how bad it was until you know i got here myself i've heard about it from family that came out you know but being over here definitely it was it was kind of hard it was kind of hard as somebody who's uh who at the time even now still slowly putting my identity yet together as a pacific islander as a quote-unquote american um as somebody who's raised away from home and so for me i think working at k vibe i see a lot of kind of that same 
I see a lot of my, I relate to a lot of the youth that come to the shop. I want to say about 98% of them are first generation born US citizens. Um, so they also have to kind of carry that burden of uh, going between different cultures and trying to be American, trying to be Micronesian, trying to be local. And so, you know, seeing the kind of struggles that they, they have to go up against, um, it's definitely, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard, but the thing that gives me solace is, you know, just seeing them all together. You know, we have a mix of Samoan, Tongan, uh, Chukis, Marshallese, uh, Hawaiian in our, in our shop. And, you know, them just being youth, most, most of them are middle school students. You know, they don't, they don't have that, that mindset that you see on social media. Like to them, they're just boys hanging out at the bike shop. You know, there's no, you know, they, of course they, you know, they throw around the labels here and there, but you know, you hear, it's funny at Chippewa, you hear like um, some Samoan youth speaking Chukis and some Chukis, you know, knowing some words in Samoan, you know, and so it's, it's, there's a lot of layers, but I think overall it's, it's definitely a blessing and a privilege to be able to work at K-Vibe in somewhere like Kalihi, uh, where I feel like most of our, you know, population is, is that generation of, you know, migrants that are coming out here from the Kofa States and trying to um, make a better life for them and the future generations. And so um, myself, um, I just kind of see myself as a, a space holder, uh, somebody who's there to, um, I guess, curate the space, for lack of better terms, you know, um, expose these youths to opportunities so that they themselves um, can make up their minds or, or find that creativity or, um, you know, just realizing any kind of potential for themselves. You know, it's hard to force youth. I tell people we can't, we can't force youth to do anything. You have to put them in positions where they can make decisions for themselves and that they can realize the potential and the, those kind of leadership qualities or um, creativity that, you know, they themselves have. And so that's how I see myself um, at K-Vibe. Some of the stories, um, related to, you know, the, the shooting that happened, you know, it was crazy. I, I hear some of the youth tell me, like, um, that it just got done getting uh, done volleyball practice, and then all of a sudden they're being questioned by police officers. Um, a police district park is, you know, the police station right there, and so I guess maybe some officers just saw them sitting at the bench. They said they're at the bench by the playground, and, um, you know, they're telling me that, officers were um, taking pictures of them and getting information from them and I think ended up ultimately taking one of them in for further questioning. I don't know exactly the extent what happened to uh, one individual, but, you know, these are stories that, you know, like I said, I, the closest thing to solidarity that I see is within those kind of spaces, spaces like K-Vibe spaces like KPT, spaces like Camp 4, you know, those those oppressed kind of spaces where your similarities or commonalities that you share with your neighbor are the same things that are oppressing you. And so I think when, um, you know, you have that, when I, I kind of think about it, like how I was back home, it's almost like a, a whole atoll, a small island atoll culture. Everybody kind of looks out for each other. You know, it might have been one way before when they were slowly coming in, but now, you know, it's makes me, you know, happy to see different Polynesian flags, different Micronesian flags hanging in the same window. Yeah, I mean, that's that's where I'm coming at from the cave or the youth uh, perspective, just from my own experiences in, in that space. Mahalo. Punahele, uh, before we, um, we come to you, I did want, I, one thing I forgot to mention in my intro is Mauna Kea. When we were in Mauna Kea, uh, there were many flags. There were many, there was much ceremony. There were many people that came up to the Mauna from all over the world. And of those folks, of those specific people, we had folks from FSM, we had folks from the Marshalls, we had folks from, right, from Guahan. We had folks from all over Micronesia standing with the Mauna standing with the Mauna. And I want us to really sit with that, 
Tanaka about when we have given not necessarily every reason for people to show up for us when people still show up for us. And when we go forward, who are we going to show up with, show up for? Um, this is the question that I'm putting out there. And having said that, I'm gonna turn it over to Punahele. Yeah, I, I remember on the Mauna, I believe it was uh, July 17th, Joy came up to me, wrote the, the bail fund number right on my hand, took my information down, and we all felt like it was going down. These cops was gonna, you know, L rat us and do, do whatever they wanted to us. And there was a Micronesian family there and they, they recognized me and they was like, hey, if you need uh, if you need bail, we'll bail you out. And I'm like, oh, snap. In my head, I'm like, you guys are people like me, you know? I come from a, a lower working class, poor background. And I'm like, keep you guys money. Let me stay because it, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, when every time it seems like my people was in need, when Hawaiians was in need, you know, my, Micronesian folks was there for us, be it on the Mauna, be it with uh, Papa Mao. And where I'm from, uh, which is Makaha on the west side of Oahu, growing up in the 90s, there was just a, a small group of, uh, you know, Chukis and Marshallese people in my community. And I, I never know what was going on in town. Everybody says in town it was always bad. The Hawaiians and you know Micronesian folks were scrapping. But in my community, we seen Micronesian people as people poor like us, like people who, who never have nothing. They was in the same underfunded environments as us, such as Uluvehis and, and satellites. And I feel like we we kind of had a bond. Um, when I was around 13, 14, a couple uh, Marshallese brothers was super passionate about tattooing. And one of my cousins was hanging with him. And a year later, I like, I never see that cousin for a year. And he was all tatted up just from his relationship with those Marshallese brothers. And there's um, people like uh, Karen Suda, who's a, who's a Muay Thai fighter from YNI. He's a, he's a Chukis brother. And yeah, he, he reps Why and I super hard. And there's even a, at the Celebrate Micronesia Festival, a student I got to work with in the past uh, made a song in Chukis about being proud about being from Why and I. And a lot of my work is with youth that are incarcerated. And just like the statistic says, um, you know, majority of people that are incarcerated are Hawaiian people. But when I go in there, all the kids look the same. Brown kids from disadvantaged backgrounds. And to me, I'm not trying to like be like a blanket statement. Every I see a piece of me in every single one of those kids. And it, one of those students I got to teach was Baby, was I Remember Psychap in 2019. And a lot of the songs that I write were inspired by workshops that I, I taught with those kids. And yeah, I'd like to share a song um, celebrating our relationships because right now in this tough junk time that we share together, this is not the first time uh, us as people connected. Terms like Polynesia, Micronesia, Melanesia wasn't created by us. As a Hawaiian, if I dig deep enough inside of my mo'uku ohau, I'll probably find uh, some kupuna that are Micronesian and also from other Pacific Islander places. So I'll share this song. Yee! Oh. Yeah. Yee! Yeah. 